single most important message a person will ever hear is the message about Jesus Christ. Unfortunately, an unpreached gospel is no gospel at all. It is in our sharing of the gospel that will make the gospel happen. If we remain open to God, every day can be a mission trip. This is Pastor Tom Arnold inviting you to join me for part four of the message titled, Five Gospel Facts. Thank you for joining us for this edition of the Good News Radio Broadcast with Pastor Tom Arnold. Tom serves as pastor of Good News Church in Yukon, Oklahoma, and is our teacher on this daily program. It is his desire that you will discover God's abundant plan for every aspect of your life through the faithful study of God's Word. Join us now as we go into today's message. When you pray and release your faith and you praise God, you just got to believe, God, you're working. I can't tell you when they marched around the walls of Jericho that they were all going, "Woo! the power's working today. I'm sure they were walking around just going, uh, do you feel as silly as? The gospel is working right now. I love Matthew 18 and 19. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. Now, I understand Jesus is omnipresent. He's everywhere all the time. I get that. I get that, that he's everywhere with us all the time. But I also want to remind you, in the context of where this statement is made, he's reminding us that he is with us always, particularly when you're out sharing the good news of the gospel. Amen. Does that make sense? I mean, yeah, he's with you all the time. He never leaves you. He never forsakes you. But when you're out sharing the good news Listen to the Holy Spirit because he'll give you words of knowledge. When you're out sharing the good news, know that he's with you and he's living in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Always remember this. God wants that person in front of you to be saved more than you want them to be saved. Correct? I'm looking back here. I see Wes DeWitt. Before Wes worked for the company that he works for now, he was a postal worker, okay, a postal worker, drove around a little vehicle delivering mail. One of Wes's stories is there was a particular person that he delivered mail to that the Lord really put on his heart, you need to reach this guy. He said, one day in particular, I knew I need to go talk to this guy. And he said, I began to share with him about God and about that. He says, you know, I was just thinking about these things. In other words, you're talking about this stuff. I was just thinking about this kind of stuff. And Wes said, I just began to share with him. Now, here's the point I want to make. God will send us places he's already been. He will send you places where he's already been there. In other words, you show up and they're going, this is so ironic. I was just thinking about this stuff. Then you say, well, pastor, I talked to them, and they look very stoic and very uninterested. But, you know, sometimes we're sowing the seed. Sometimes we're watering the seed. And sometimes we're reaping the harvest. But you see, the Bible says, really, it's the Lord that gets the glory, regardless of where we're at in the process. God's the one that gets the increase. He's the one that gets all the glory and the honor. So Christianity is a power religion. When you go out into the world, know that you're going in the power of the Spirit. Lo, I'm with you always. The will of God is revealed through the Word of God. To question the Scriptures is to question the integrity of God. God is His Word. People to doubt the Bible is to doubt God. And so God is very present with us. Notice what it says in Matthew chapter 3 and verse number 1 about John the Baptist. In those days, John the Baptist came preaching in the wilderness of Judea. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heaven is at hand. Heaven is at hand. You know, it'd be a good message today if we just told everybody, guess what? Heaven is at hand. Oh, one day, pastor, I'm going to die and I'll go to heaven. Well, I'm going to tell you that's true, but I want to also remind you, heaven is at hand right here. Heaven, the kingdom of God, the power of God, the presence of the Holy Spirit, he's here. 
It's been said he feared man so little because he feared God so much. And that's what happens. We fear men so much because we fear God so little. Both truths are the right. See, the more we have a fear of the Lord and a desire and awe of him and a reverence and respect for him, we're more interested in the praise of God than the praise of man. Man is grass, the scripture says, as the flower. They fade, but God's word is true. So I want to remind you that there is a faith side to the gospel, and the faith side of the gospel releases the supernatural. You know, you say, Pastor, what's the main point you want me to get from that? I just want to encourage you that in the people you're trying to reach, in the people that you're trying to influence for the gospel, they seem so unresponsive. They seem so belligerent. That's not keeping the word of God from working in their life. You see what happens after you leave them, God didn't leave them. After you leave that word that you've given them, it just starts registering in their spirits. You know, it's funny. I'll tell this little story. These stories come to my mind, and I just have to take them as God, all right? Kenneth E. Egan tells a story how that one time he was in a meeting, and he said there was this guy that was kind of agnostic or atheist, and, and he ran up to him one time, and he said, well, if there is a God, you're going to have to convince me that there is a God. You're going to have to tell me some way or another, convince me that there is a God. And if there is a heaven, you've got to let me know because I don't want to miss heaven and I certainly don't want to go to hell. And this guy, he said, the longer he started talking, he just kind of got nutty. Those are my words. But anyway, he got all kind of worked up. He says, well, you're not a candidate because the Bible says in Hebrews 11:6, 6, he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. You don't even believe that he is. You don't qualify. He just kept going on. And he said that God called him again one time. He says, well, you're going to have to convince me there's a God. You're going to have to convince me there's a heaven and hell. You're going to have to convince him. And he said, well, the Bible says he that cometh to God must believe that he is. And that he's a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. And he said, that's all they get. And that's gave him one scripture. And he said, that man said this. He said, I went home. I woke up in the morning thinking about that scripture. I went to bed at night thinking about that scripture. All day long, that scripture was in my mind. He that cometh to God must believe that he is. He's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. And he said, I just, that scripture is just working in my head, working in my mind, working in my mind. And eventually that man came to the Lord. Did you know one scripture spoken under the anointing can change a person's life? You say, Pastor, every time do you get up to preach, do you just feel just happy bumps everywhere? <laughs> every time you step in this building, do you just, oh, man, I just feel chill bumps all over? No. <laughs> but can I tell you, God's still God, whether I've got chill bumps or not, God's still alive. And you know what happens? The more I begin to talk about him and the more I begin to brag on him and the more I begin to boast on the Lord and the more I begin to edify him and lift his name up, what happens? Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And David encouraged himself in the Lord. Why are you cast down, O my soul? Put your hope in God. I mean, we have to stir up the gift of God that's within us. Oh, I tell you, if you lead praise and worship, you better understand walking by faith. Come on, let's all praise the Lord. And you got two people go. <laughs> I've done it. You know, it's a challenge. But that's when the scripture says in Jeremiah, don't be afraid of their faces. And you just look at them. <laughs> Number five, the anointing and the power of the Holy Spirit associated with the gospel. Notice what Peter said about the Lord Jesus Christ and his earthly ministry. Acts chapter 10, verse number 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. He went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. And notice what Jesus did. He went about doing good. Y'all, you know, you're going to have to go about well, I go to work, and I come home, and I park it, and I'm not doing anything. Well, you're going to have to do more than park it. You're going to have to get in drive. 
You're going to have to go about doing good. You're going to have to be willing to reach out. And I'm not talking about just running in your own energy and your own effort. Here's the way it works. If God gives Tom Arnold gifts, his intention is, Tom, those gifts aren't for you. Those gifts are for you to share with other people. You know what people do? Oh, I got a gift. What's your gift, singing? Well, do you use it? No, no, it's my gift. Well, you know, God doesn't want you to hoard the gift. He wants you to share the gift. Yeah, I got a gift of hospitality. Do you ever use it? No, it's my gift. God's not giving us gifts to hoard. God's giving you gifts to give. And here's what happens. When you give that gift, guess what? It starts exponentially increasing and exponentially growing. It gives us a chance to just think about the goodness of God. So there's an anointing in the gospel. There are secular songs and then there's anointed songs. Ah, oh, this secular song. Oh, what, what were they singing about? How horrible life is and how they hate life and they hate everything. Well, what are these people singing about? Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. Y'all, you can exalt the problem or you can exalt God. So there's an anointing side. So those are the five facts of the gospel, five that I have time for. There's an urgency side. There's a compassion side. Are you urgent? Oh, pastor, I got a lifetime to reach this person. Maybe not. Jesus said, don't say there's four months and then comes a the harvest. You need to get up and get doing something now. There's a simplicity side of the gospel. Even if you don't know much, get going. There's a faith side to the gospel. God's working whenever you don't even recognize that he's working. He's still working in your situation. And then finally, there's an anointing side to the gospel. As you begin to share the good news, the anointing settles in. It is wonderful to be in the presence of God. See, here's what people are looking for. They're, hey, let's go over here and have fun. Let's, let's go do this. But here's the reality. The Spirit of God who lives in you, he can bring a contentment in your life, a satisfaction in your life. You've heard me say this so often. You know why most people went drinking last night? Because they're dry. That went over real good. I'm going to say it went so good, I'm going to say it again. Most people went drinking last night because they're dry. But Jesus said, come unto me, and out of your innermost being will flow rivers of living water. This spake he of the Spirit, which they that believe in him should receive. So, you know, we just got to think about that. A lot of people are searching for this, they're searching for that. What we're really looking for is Jesus. Amen. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you today that you're living in us today, Lord. And Father, we just pray that each one of us here today will do our part to share your good news, Lord. And Father, help us to be remembered that an unpreached gospel is no gospel at all. And an unshared gospel is no gospel at all. There's no good news in that. Thanks for joining me for today's program. It's important that we remember that it's in the sharing of the gospel that will make the gospel happen. For some people, you are their only chance to be reached, and for others, you are their last chance. The message of Jesus Christ is still the world's greatest message. Thank you for listening to today's message. You can hear this message again by visiting online at goodnewschurch.tv. To listen to this and many other messages by Pastor Tom, download the Good News Church mobile device app by searching for Good News Church Yukon through both the iTunes and Android stores. Through the website, you can also subscribe to the podcast. Pastor Tom invites you to visit Good News Church whenever you are in the greater Oklahoma City area. Good News is located at the intersection of Main Street and the Yukon Parkway in Yukon. He welcomes you to worship with them on Sundays at 10 a.m. Good News Church, it's a great place to be.